evening, everybody, and welcome to Mad Realms Vote to Kick. I'm your host, Jim, and with me, fellow Talking Script Prime host, Deo. Hey! I'm the prime host. He's the, well, you are. You're you're like you're always in the top left box, and you know, when when you're gone, like age just marched us through the show. Like, did did you watch that? And we just got kind of like railroaded a little oh, bit. Oh, I, I I I watched it. Because I remember you guys threw me under the bus. No, no, like you, you kind of let us meander a little bit, and then you're like, guys, come on. And and age is just like, no. Anyway, before we get off track, like talking script usually does, Saturdays at four p.m. Eastern time for Guild Wars Two news. Very subtle, I'm sure. Um, tonight on Vote to Kick, we are talking about difficulty options in gaming. Hot button topic. Um, just remember, you learned nothing. You took a shortcut, and I don't have the entire meme thing memorized. But um, before we get to that BS, let's talk about remasters. I talked with Arlie three weeks ago. Uh, you can see the results of the poll right on over there. Um, favor of remasters. Um, I forgot to count. Oh, that's not the one I want to open. Uh, for forgot to count the number of votes that we had. Oh. Just pull these up. Seven responses, uh, three to four. Keep uh, the keeps have it. Let's so, call. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I think a lot of people are happy about remasters when they come out. Um, some notable exceptions, like me and Arlie were talking about, was she's really happy about remasters because it's stuff like Ocarina of Time and Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, but the one me and Arlie talked about most that probably games accessible to new generations that but um the one that we talked about that was kind of egregious was the god of war 3 remaster for the ps3 and it's just kind of or, oh, okay no the god of war remaster for the ps4 because it came out on the ps3 but that was neither here nor there anywho tonight we are talking about difficulty options and that is uh primarily spurred on by our sekiro coming out from software putting out another of their famously difficult games um high skill floor high skill ceiling um there was a big debate about people especially since it was a far more narratively driven game i believe one of the jokes that was often thrown around is that uh bloodborne and the dark soul series were told through item descriptions in vadi vidya which um thank you vadi because uh, without you, I wouldn't know a lot of the little tidbits that happened in uh, Bloodborne. So probably toss him a link to his channel in the description for this video. Because damn, I need to watch more of his stuff. Um, but Sekiro has narrative. They have people talking and being not cryptic. Which is different for a FromSoft game. Um, and it spurred the debate of should there be difficulty options and that was from one side and then other people were talking about accessibility not difficulty uh we're talking about that first half difficulty because i think me and Dale were pretty much in agreement that accessibility like colorblind modes um like font sliders stuff like that things to make it easier for people to play the game to have a chance to get good we're pretty i'm, I'm guessing you're in favor of that just as well as i am yeah, and I was gonna say that was my big thing was I hope people don't like have a gut reaction when they hear that they kind of lump it all together. Yeah, uh, my my personal mm -hmm. thought is um, specifically from Sekiro is the um, the the character that pops up whenever an enemy is doing a perilous attack is red, and it's kind of in like a flash of red light. If you're red green colorblind, I can imagine that mm -hmm. just kind of bleeding into everything around it, and you'll just completely miss it unless you go entirely off of the audio cue that comes along with it but you know, a lot of a lot of people have done a, a lot of interesting stuff about the accessibility portion of it like i know recently i think it was funhouse kind of did an extra added on thing where they talked about it and they also mentioned markiplier in there and stuff like that but they had a brilliant like quote i think that markiplier said when he was talking with some of the accessibility gamers of they just want 
to be a they want to be on the level playing field to suffer like the rest of us like through these types of games they don't want to have to suffer extra just because of the problems that they already have yes yeah so and i think yeah that's a perfect way to look at it but i don't think that is the case with difficulty no um so as per usual when we get off into it deo you are arguing kick yes Okay, so Deo's arguing kick, and as per usual, it is guest choice, first or second? I'll go first. I mean, okay. I think it's just simple that uh, a difficulty option, I think, should be left to the discretion. And like we said before, we're, we're I, I kind of want to make sure people realize that we're separating it from the accessibility thing. But if you just want to be able to steamroll your way through a game, if that is not how they intended it to be the the developers i think that's how you know you you should have to deal with it kind of that get good mentality i i think they should add things in the game where maybe you could go train or something along that lines but just to be able to slide it uh to a lesser degree might make you miss out on that art or that like the style that they're trying to deliver the story or something because if you kill the thing and like one hit it might not be able to deliver this one line that it that uh, yes that i've run into uh especially with a lot of new game plus stuff is there's some kind of exposition or something that happens and you just kind of walk in and you bap, yeah. and then it just jump cuts because killing the thing triggers the next bit of dialogue and you miss out on stuff granted that's new game plus and you technically should have already heard all of that but uh Case in point was um, when my wife was playing Horizon Zero Dawn, there is this big deal where one of the enemies that become a very common enemy type later on in the game, um, I think it's a Ravager, uh, it's supposed to, like, you're supposed to set up traps and, like, whittle it down and then execute it, and then, because this is New Game Plus and she had just spent the entire time in the DL finishing the DLC before finishing the game and moving on, that had all of the melee weapon upgrades, so she just kind of charged at it and whacked it with her spear three times. Oh. So that's that's kind of one of those things that you're talking about, but, like, for, for me, it was New Game Plus, so it's, like, it's not like I really was looking to hear that dialogue again. But yeah. I understand what you're saying, is, like, you know, you go through and it's just like, oh, the difficulty is tuned way down, so you bop something on the head and it skips everything and moves on. Yeah, it's like it's like I'm curious of what you're getting out of it, except for just the bragging rights of like, I mean, to tell your friends that you've played through the game. I'm I. That's one thing, I guess. Um, the other thing with, I do not like the idea of something categorized as an easy mode, and I know this is kind of against my whole point of and i forgot to put the poll in chat but um i don't think that the devs should design a difficulty and then knock everything down my personal and i was gonna say i think that's my biggest problem with all of them was always like this fight will take your weapon will now do x amount of damage more towards it or less towards it or it's going to have a bigger health pool or a lesser health pool dependent on the difficulty not it's no longer going to have this mechanic to make it easier for the individual or it's now going to have this mechanic to make it harder for the individual first time i've actually had to take notes while doing the show because i have to remember to put stuff in the thumb in the uh, description <laughs> and my pen doesn't work damn it come on there we go Bobby. But yeah i and you know i that's why i'm just curious of who who's it after if if they just want the achievement points which grant or achievement points or trophies or whatever it's such an arbitrary thing that doesn't mean anything i mean if you're comparing yourselves to your friends there should be some kind of little marker saying you did it on easy or you did it on well, blah or, that's that tends to be the thing is um you get tro if you're doing it for trophies or achievements or what have you those tend to be like you did it on this difficulty you did it on yeah. this and you have one for every difficulty and then if you don't have the, the lower ones, you just automatically get them when you finish the game. Yeah. Um, with stuff like 
the the exception i feel is for stuff like and this is going to sound weird is games journalists because people who work for professional review sites for games journalist sites they have to go through just just an untold number of games to do their articles and there are times where stuff like dark souls bloodborne sekiro it's one of those things where you need to have the level of skill like you have to take time because it's training your reflexes honestly my problem with sekiro is i played a lot of bloodborne i didn't play much dark souls dark souls would probably have actually prepared me better for it because dark souls is more about blocking bloodborne is way more about dodging and that's not how you win in sekiro you have to parry so that was my problem there um that's there are some points in time where it's just like being able to tone down the difficulty could be helpful now my point to that fact is uh a recent video on the game theorist channel from matt pat was talking about games difficulty in response to the whole sekiro controversy that is just the latest blow up of this in a long line of this stuff happening and the point is that the devs have been making things easier on us for the history of gaming. Yes. And the whole thing there is, uh, for example, adaptive difficulty. I believe one of the silent, no, it wasn't silent Hill. It was resident evil four. Um, the video he shows is you walk into a church, I believe and there is a boss or a mini boss flanked by three or four enemies on either side and then more people up on a, a higher level and then they died to that fight and then reload the save walk back in and the guys up on the higher levels are gone then there's another one i think from one of the silent hills where there are apparently demon babies where they literally strip away senses from the demon babies if you proceed to die to them repeatedly. And then if you manage to die several times more so that they literally are basically fumbling around in the dark for you, they start removing some of them. And that's one of the things that it's kind of hidden from us. And then there was another point where I think it was Gears of War 1 where in multiplayer matches players are actually given a damage boost for their first few games that falls off as they get kills because their data showed that i think the number was and i'm going to link the video in the description just so that i i know my numbers aren't entirely right because memory but 90 percent of the players who played a multiplayer match without getting a kill never played another multiplayer match so that's to keep them that's that's to keep their butts in the seats so they spend money and stuff well i i don't think gears of war one had microtransactions i i'd have to have look like, it up do they have like dlcs or anything because i don't well i'm not a huge I, shooter fan so i'm not a yeah i wasn't sure i don't remember way back i don't or like map packs had, or anything like that because i know I, that was a popular thing i don't think it it might have had map packs but like at the same time it's I can't be sure because that's yeah. what Gears of War was Xbox 360 release. I want to say yeah, it was a while ago. Um, but it's it's one of those things where difficulty options have kind of been a thing, even behind the scenes, just to make sure that we all keep playing. So uh, <laughs> then there's there's even. Um, one of my personal favorites that brought this up before was Ninja Gaiden on the original Xbox. Um, that had a mode where if you died three times to the same area, it asked you if you wanted to reduce the difficulty to Ninja Dog. And it, it kind of made fun of you for doing so. Um, which is kind of an old tactic for using uh, lower difficulty levels. But um, I 
realize I'm not making a very good argument for keeping this. Uh, um, I see. I see you even color coordinated for being on on red for this. I think I've done that by accident, like most of the time too. That's pretty bad. But generally speaking, it's being able to have the option to do so. I don't mind. Like if you are clearly having a problem playing at this difficulty, having some form of way to bring something down could help you enjoy the game more. And then you could work your way up. I mean, I didn't start playing Darksiders on apocalyptic mode. But I, but my question is, why can't you get better at the game? Because there are points in time where a mechanic is something you can't react to well enough. If it kills you in one hit and then you have to do the thing to get back to the fight. This is one of the problems I had with Sekiro that I've been bouncing between um, there's like a past section that you can access early in the game and then the present. And I've been bouncing back and forth between those two progressing on each of them because when I hit something on one side and I can't like I feel like I've hit a wall instead of getting frustrated, I'll stop and I'll move to the other side and explore that and I'll just bounce back and forth like that. Because death actually matters in that game. You can't just grind your face against it until you win like you can in Bloodborne and the Dark Souls series. Um, so without the ability to do something else, I think there's a problem. Because there is... I don't know if there are studies into it, but if you keep failing at the same thing over and over again, I'm fairly certain that it actually reduces your likelihood of success if you just keep throwing yourself at it. So say there's a mechanic that you keep dying to and it does so like it just one shots you because of the difficulty because it's designed to do that. Like you are supposed to die to this thing, but you just can't get the timing right. And then you have to go back to the checkpoint. You have to walk back up to the boss. And in the meantime, your your mind isn't in the look for the mechanic mindset. And then you have to get back into the fight do whatever you know start of boss fight cutscene you were doing and then go back into and then like watch for the mechanic again and then like you can slip and you can miss that and because you're not able to repeat it in a single fight you don't start committing that to muscle memory because the the time and but you'd know this more than me than i would with you know the psych degree but um it, well, but with speedrunners, don't they have to like, like I've seen like Mario Maker stuff where you have to go back to a checkpoint and if you die so far in there, it's like you have to go back and that specifically is kind of different because they can see a configuration because Super Mario Maker speedrunners are uh, an outlier. They're not people who picked up a game and are just playing it for the first time and trying to learn the mechanics. Super Mario Maker speedrunners are people, and like ROM hack speedrunners are people who have. Okay, maybe not even just speedrunners, but the Mario Maker people that like people get custom maps from other people that. Yeah. It's well, just even, like. Even then, the people who do that, like watching Markiplier play, uh, honestly, I don't think Markiplier is a speedrunner. I think people just like watching him play Super Mario Maker to hear him yell, which I'll agree is, is great fun. Um, but people who play who, speedrunners who play Super Mario Maker levels, again, they have the knowledge from playing all of those ROM hacks and everything and mu intense muscle memory of the mechanics. So they can see a configuration, guess where they need to go and then execute on that. Sure. They might not be exactly precise, but once they see the mechanic, they know what they're doing and they just have to get the timing right. I'm talking about before that muscle memory is established. I'm talking about people who had never played a FromSoft game, and they're like, Sekiro, that seems really cool, and I love the style. I want to pick that up. But then you die in one hit to a boss attack. But isn't that also, like, learning something? Like, well, basically learning anything in any situation? It's very, very difficult until you actually learn it. It is, but I'm talking and about that's when... That's the rewarding part. The difficulty is here... And your threshold for being able to commit it to memory is here. Because you have to watch that 
threshold of annoyance where people just rage quit. Like there's there's a point in time where you just are so frustrated with the game. It's like, screw this. I can't figure this attack out. I can't figure the timing out. I'm done. And there are some people who will just put the game down and never pick it back up. I'll admit, my Bloodborne playthrough before my PS, my original PS4 bricked, there were times where I would stop playing for months because I would just have other stuff to do, I would have other games to play, and normally I'd hit a wall in my progression. It was either a boss or an area or a place I couldn't figure out where to go, and I just put the game down and I walked away from it because I couldn't. Like, I didn't want to keep dealing with the frustration of it. Uh, and, and that's and that's and that's fine. But then there's those people that want to figure that out, like right, minuscule little and, thing. And, I, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I feel like, and again, I'm saying feel, but you know that's why we're talking here on it. We're going back and forth on this. Um, those people who want to get good, uh, I'll use Fenris as an example. Fenris loves getting platinum trophies on PS4. That's just his thing. He loves to do it. It's it's something... He's an achievement hunter. There's nothing wrong with that. And honestly, more power to the man for taking the time to do some of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Hot damn. Wow, that was good timing. Um, <laughs> thank you, Fenris. Uh, but it's it's one of those things where I don't think Fenris is the average gamer. I don't think people who are in it for the get good mentality, like the people who will grind through Dark Souls and Bloodborne and Sekiro and all of those other super difficult games, those people aren't the primary, like, like they're not the average gamer, so to speak. But now, I'm think... not saying that games should not be designed in that way. Oh. Okay, but if we're using Sekiro or Dark Souls or those as the example, and you're saying that those are for those types of people, right? That's my question: is isn't it okay if the game's not for you or for that particular individual? For the most part, yes. From a like, developer standpoint, I know from a publisher standpoint, they want to be like, no, we want publishers all want all the money. Yes, publisher. We've already established, and many other games people said, publishers want all of the money, not just some of the money. Um, yeah. Designer intent, and even then, like um, the uh, the the guy who the producer for Dark Souls One, Three, Bloodborne, and Sekiro, he. I think his name is Miyazaki. Not to be confused with the animator. Or, uh, yeah. But, um, Miyazaki. Thank you, Fenris. Um, he even said that, like, he wouldn't mind adding some accessibility, like, some, some way to scale back on the difficulty. It was in an interview. So, yeah, uh, de developer intent is there, but then there's also the developer saying, yeah, I'm kind of sad that people are having a hard time even getting into this game and wanting to, to get better because it feels so punishing right at the start. I'll mm -hmm. admit, Sekiro felt super punishing at the very beginning of the game because you have one use of your healing item. And, and, uh, and that's, that's my basic. A tiny, minuscule health bar. It should be at the discretion of the developer. I just don't think it should be a requirement throughout all games. Right. Like, like you said, I think it's a our artistic medium is video games where if if the artist or the developers in this case um say no we want it to be this difficult breaking your teeth on a type thing or if we want it to be accessible for everyone if we want it to be a story that everyone can enjoy then they can make the difficulties or the behind the scenes difficulty scaling like but to make it a requirement and like I said, once again, I know people are getting in here near uh, in between. This is different than the accessibility issue because I know that's where the accessibility thing starts to come in. That we're not talking about that topic. That you know. Yes, but. this is not about accessibility. We are both in agreement that accessibility options are fantastic, and there should be more of them. Yeah. 
Um, but it, honestly, um, I feel like most games should fall in between those two points. Like, for, like, creating a difficulty. Like, there should be some skill progression, but it should not be so punishing that you don't want to actually get enough into the game to start seeing the fruits of your labor. Which, I think Sekiro almost did poorly. Like, I don't consider myself in the average for gamers who like difficulty levels. Like, I enjoy a challenge. I like Bloodborne. I like getting good at Bloodborne. I haven't really played Dark Souls yet because the combat... I have to get my in my head that I am a knight, not a, a Victorian-esque hunter. So I, I tend to dodge too much in Dark Souls. But... Sekiro, you start with a, a health bar that, for any of the large enemies, they can one-shot you with most of their attacks. You start with one use of your healing item, which I think is an outlier to most of FromSoft. Uh, I think Estus Flasks start at four or five in the Dark Souls series, and Bloodborne you can carry up to, I want to say, 20 blood vials to heal with. But... I feel Sekiro was kind of pushing it a little bit. Which, uh, I think the reason why the difficulty ba debate exploded off of Sekiro was because it was a far more narrative-driven game. Because there was more obviously a story rather than, you're stuck in here with all these monsters, deal with it. And then you kind of had to piece together things as you went. Isn't that good that they're actually adding story to these, like difficult games so it's more appealing for those people that it can you know oh, it's fantastic that they're adding a more like, overt plot i think that's fantastic and honestly from what i've played through for sekiro is fantastic i enjoy the story can't say i enjoy the english vo but that's because the game is so goram japanese that i can't take it seriously and they're not the english vo isn't campy enough that i can find it funny like it's it's serious and well done, VO, but it's just like, in my head, I'm seeing, you know, Shinobi and literal Kappas and Oni, and I'm just like, I, I can't, the disconnect is too strong. But, um, well, that's, that's room for personal opinion, opinion Fenris. But um, with the stronger emphasis on story... And like Fenris was saying, is that Sekiro is hard in ways that Bloodborne and Dark Souls is not, and possibly more so. Like, the start is very punishing. And death, I don't know if it can kill NPCs, but the more you die, it spreads a disease called Dragon Rot that can negatively affect your gameplay. I don't know if it goes any farther than negating the chance that you lose out on... Uh, there is a chance to receive Unseen Aid, which re uh, keeps you from losing golden experience when you die. And the more people that have Dragon Rot, the lower your chance of Unseen Aid is. I don't know if Dragon Rot can kill people, because there's talk from NPCs in the game that it kills people. So I don't know if I could permanent like if I die too many times, do I permanently lose access to an NPC? I, I don't think it can either, Fenris, because people who can be afflicted with dragon rot are like key NPCs, like upgrading your stuff, getting shops like items and stuff. So, um, but it's it's one of those things where an increased emphasis on story makes people want to play the game more because there's a plot there's a story to be told not a story for you to rip out of the game but also with an increased difficulty it becomes more frustrating to get to that story and it's just one of those things where it's like i'll just watch a youtube video of it now so yeah but it's it's one of those things where i i think sekiro is unique in its position 
I do not think that that is a common thing because nobody really made this much of a stink over Dark Souls or Bloodborne. Like, the fact that they just kind of booted you out into the world and told you to figure it out, I think that kept a lot of people from playing that were not of the, we'll call it the get good tribe. Yeah. Um. So, I'll agree, developer intent is a thing. Um, I, I just I just feel like we might be slightly robbing people, even the people that aren't good at the thing at the time, of that dopamine reward. Oh, uh, we're robbing them of a sense of pride and accomplishment? Yes. That dopamine rush they'll get when they finish that. Like, I still remember when I was a kid, the Battletoads level where you're on the freaking, like, slider things, and it's, like, freaking impossible, and then all of a sudden you do it, what's the first thing you do when you like you watch a youtube video when they accomplish something crazy like the kid they get up on their chair they're like yeah what? like yeah I, just, I did that i did that and i dropped my game boy and then i it restarted and i had to replay that level well there's the risk of it yeah but <laughs> but uh yeah it's i i think it's like we don't have like if if you're able to lower difficulty, it's like okay, boop, 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 boop. Uh, all right, hey, I did it this time. Okay. Yeah. I I think the it would be better to have it so that normal is the like the starting difficulty is what the baseline that the devs want. I do think that if there are algorithms that can detect this, and it could just be so something as simple as you have died to this one spot X number of times, like I was mentioning in Ninja Gaiden. I even think. Um, Devil May Cry 1 did it uh, to ask if you want to lower the difficulty. And that could be more granular. And then as you proceed to, like, increase in your... Like, as you continue without dying, it could raise things back up to normal. Um, I'll admit those difficulty options... Single-player MMR. Sing yes, single-player MMR. Thank you. That is a perfect way to put it. Um... Uh, sorry, AFK Queen, I changed it. It's VTK. I need to put a note somewhere over here for that. Um, but I, I feel like I don't necessarily want to call it hand-holding, and I don't necessarily want it to be as chunky as easy, normal, hard. I want gra like percentages, like single percentage point movements or five points or however you want the, the modifiers to go. I don't want to suddenly, like, you go from dealing 5% of a boss's health bar in one hit to dealing 50%. And then as you continue to succeed, you come back up to equilibrium, to the difficulty level that you started at. Or maybe just have that for normal, because if you're choosing to have hard as a baseline, you clearly have made the decision that you want to play a more difficult experience and you kind of know what you're getting into. Um, I, I definitely think that that kind of option would probably be a better thing. And clearly, developers think that's a good idea too because they've been adding these mechanics into the background to keep us playing for how long? Mm-hmm. Though, so is it them... It depends on what they're trying to push. Like, you have the games that are wanting to push a store more of a story so you have them like pretty open to everyone then you have the game uh you know games like dark souls and stuff like that's supposed to be their niche their niche yeah, yeah. sorry but you're sick it's okay difficult yeah the uh, difficulty level options give games replayability well if okay, i mean we're more talking like below normal Above, I don't think anybody's saying that, you know, if you want to make your game harder, more power to you. Yeah. Like, we're... we're master mode. Yeah, master mode and Ocarina of Time. Like, the Ocarina well, of Time. Well, like, we were talking about new it's game pluses tutorial. and stuff like that. There are Lionels in the tutorial area. Oh, you mean Breath of the Wild? Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah, why? <laughs> but... Yeah, like, basically new game plus style things. It's like, yeah. I've already gone through, because I know I said it earlier, was like... If you put it on easy or something, you know, you might kill a boss too fast or something where it doesn't get the dialogue out. Or I've had at times where you kill something so fast, it's like the dialogue. It's like 
the guy's dead, but it's somehow it's like it's still mysteriously talking. Oh yeah, they're still like, delivering their lines of dialogue and they're dead. Yeah. Um permadeath modes are dumb. Um I think permadeath is a cool gimmick. I I I don't think it's I mean, in the end if you want to elect into that or if that is the design of the game, that is on them. I would personally never play like a game like that. I mean, dude, that's just because you ground your face against Outlast Two. <sighs> like, I can't. I, I, n- no, you couldn't. Honestly, you couldn't pay me to play Outlast in the first place because I'm not a huge fan of horror games. But uh, a permadeath mode in a horror game where you have no weapons, no tie. Um, it's. I got thrown off by permadeath modes. Um, they're I, difficult. They're, they're different. Like it's that's another level of difficulty where, like, if you lose, you lose all that progress. Uh, t- shit, roguelikes are literally permadeath games. They're fantastic, and it's it's a it's a niche game type. I tend to I actually really like roguelikes, but yeah, I think it's like kind of like AFK, AFK Queen is saying. It kind of comes back to what you hear about with like Dungeons and Dragons. You have like the really good dungeon masters that want to tell a story and take people through it and challenge them here and there. And that's kind of like the difficulty options. But then you have the dungeon masters that want to be like, I want to challenge them at every turn, the hardest thing ever. And yes, I would not recommend a new player to go in there. Like I, I played with, I played with that DM. The guy was an asshole. He saw D and D as DM versus player, and he designed all of his encounters specifically to beat us for no reason. And it's one of those things where it's just like, no. And I'm sure he learned that from someone else. So there, there are, if you look at it like that way, it's like there is a group. There's a game that that what that gm create uh dm created but that's not what you know in that particular reason you were up to you wanted more of a story experience or you know something a little bit different mix i suppose so it's what's it's, the dark souls of D, let's just call it that i suppose it's the same thing we have this discussion about the story mode and raids in guild wars 2 yeah so it's uh Okay, so I, I think that we've we've pretty much pulled this in, but before we get into an hour-long video, um, this has been Mad Realms Vote to Kick. Uh, I believe, for the wrap-up, I don't necessarily want overt difficulty options, but perhaps for normal mode difficulties, we have a way to, you know, scale things back a little bit, and then as people see success, scale things forward back up to equilibrium um and then you're saying that you know developer intent is a big part of this and if they want this to be a difficult game let it be let it be yeah, it's 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 their art it you know it's oh god i didn't mean to start that <laughs> it's their art so they should feel how they want to display it and like you said in the case of uh, uh, Sakuro, the developer said afterwards hearing about it, it once he got res- feedback from people, if someone gets feedback on their, uh, you know, sculpture or something, Doug might go back and change it or say, no, this is how I wanted it intended. Like, that's basically how he, in that situation, saw it as, oh, maybe I should put an easier option in. So, you know... I, I, th- I feel it should be to the discretion of the people designing the game. Fair enough. So I think that's about where we're hitting. I, I, I feel like I'm choosing topics better because I don't feel like we're really meeting in the middle again and we still have A and B. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, I've been your host, Jim. You can find me on Twitter at Meltanus MMO. You can find Vote to Kick Live at usually 8 p.m. Eastern Time every Wednesday, followed by... Uh, random stuff streaming. It's usually Zero to Hero, where we play either PvP or difficult games. Um, But tonight, we're probably going to do something a little chill. Probably the Guild Wars 2 boss rush for stuff. Um, 
my guest tonight has been Deo. You can find him on Twitch and Twitter and YouTube at simply underscore Deo. Uh, and you can also find both of us every Saturday. Not this Saturday. Not this Saturday for me. But um, you can find us at, on Saturdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Talking Scred, our weekly Guild Wars 2 news podcast, where we talk about all kinds of things that are happening in the world of Tyria. And I uh, hope to see you there. Hope to see you all here next week. And I hope you all have a fantastic evening. Good night, everybody. Take care.